Right, so very warm welcome back. We're in Sandton today, just north of Johannesburg, and in the middle of Youth Month, or coming towards the end of it actually, uh, we're busy continuing to, I suppose, remember uh, June 1976, but the big question really now is uh, 39 years on, what is the story for the young people of South Africa today and going forward? And we're unpacking that with you, as well as my panelists that have joined us in uh, on the stage here today. Uh, just before the break, we heard from Deputy Minister Budimana Mela, and he spoke at great length about the national youth policy, uh, its aims and its ambitions, and uh, the hopes uh, in securing the uh, future for uh, young South Africans. Uh, we've got two other guests that are joining us today, and uh, I'd like to now just ask um, songstress, but I think a social activist as well is another word I could use for you, uh, Simpiwa Dana. And I just wonder, I mean, you were a very young girl in 1994, so in many ways, you represent the youth that we're talking about in South Africa in this uh, democratic era. And I'm just wondering, um, from a young person's perspective, uh, what, are, what are the big things that we need to be thinking about and doing, particularly as we consider that the theme of Youth Month this year has been youth moving South Africa forward? Um, thank you, Peter. I think the difference between the youth of 1976 and the youth of today is that in 76, as much as um, society was uh, disempowering to the youth or the system at the time was disempowering, the youth themselves did not feel disempowered, which is why they, they went and they faced those guns and they died on June 16. And today, the youth uh, feeling empowered would be in the form of having that entrepreneurial spirit with the understanding that this country is their inheritance. They will, they will uh, inherit it one day, so they have to work towards making sure that it is worth something when they have to take over one day. That is the one big issue, because there are so many of our young people who are sitting at home and they've got degrees, they can't find work, as, as you mentioned earlier. And um, if you think of the recent xenophobia that mm. happened, um, one of the reasons why there's such tensions is that the rest of the continent is quite entrepreneurial more than we are here. And that was like one of uh, the big um, contentions that resulted in, 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 in the violence in the country. Not necessarily because we are xenophobic, but we cannot access opportunities that are in existence because we are not entrepreneurial in, in spirit. So that is one thing that we have to um, find. It's a challenge that we need to um, find ways around. I think I was speaking to Puti the other day and he was mentioning that there will be, you, you can, will be able to take courses whether you have metric or not, where then you can you know, actively use your, your hands and your entrepreneurial spirit to, to create businesses for yourself. And I think that there also should be like macro lending opportunities where you can, like say, get 5,000 to start your own business, you know, in the township so that people won't have to feel such discontent that they want a turnaround, you know, from 350 years of being disempowered to, in 20 years' time, everything being smooth sailing is, is not possible. So we need to then re-empower the young people to believe that their, their future is in their own hands, so that you know, as much as the government must do for you, you also are doing for yourself and for your country. Okay, so very powerful message there from one of uh, South Africa's young people who's uh, worked hard, actually, uh, taken the opportunities and uh, carved a career for, for yourself. Yeshin, you know, as I hear Deputy Minister and as I hear Sambuwa, uh, a lot of the things that are coming through kind of fall in your office, to be honest, you know, uh, developing entrepreneurs, empowering them, giving them opportunities. So I'm just wondering, um, Deputy Minister also spoke about a revamp of the NYDA and to sort of a recatalization. So my question to you is, um, what's happened since uh, the new board came in 2013? What journey have you been on and what kind of an Im impact has uh, the NYDA been, been having since then? Well, I think apart from uh, simply uh, asking my mother for help, I think we'd probably also <laughs> want to ask the private sector and civil society to, to help a bit more as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, because it is a broader societal challenge, the issue of youth development and youth unemployment in particular. 
Uh, and I think that comes out strongly in the new National Youth Policy 2020 that Deputy Minister Manamela spoke about, that you know, progress is defined as forward or onward movement towards a destination. And when you look at the NY day of today, what you will see is progress. Yes, we still have a long way to go. Yes, we have not reached that final destination where each and every young person is either employed, uh, empowered, or, or educated. But progress is a far cry away from having done nothing at all. Mm. And I think if you look at uh, what has been achieved in not just the last five years, but in a period of two years, especially in the NYDA, we have certainly made great strides uh, in reaching out to many more young people uh, as opposed to the past. Uh, so what we have seen is a repositioning of the NYDA but in a way that uh, ensures that all social partners take on the responsibility of youth development, including the private sector and civil society, and that we have more partnerships. Uh, we have also launched a number of new programs, the NYJ Business Grant Program uh, to foster a culture or to nurture a culture of small business development amongst the youth, the NYDA uh, Mara Mentorship Program that the President launched on June 16th uh, to, to promote mentorship, uh, which is quite critical for youth development. Because because youth development is not one-dimensional. It involves economic development, social development, and one's own personal development, including life skills, leadership, etc. And so we've had a number of programs working together in a more integrated and holistic way to achieve more impact for young people. Fundamentally, though, there's only so much you can do with limited resources, especially when you have excess demand for those products, services, and programs. And that's the biggest challenge that the NYJ has faced in, in in, in, in years uh, to come, and that will continue to face in the future. And hence, we've said that youth development has to be the business of all, not just the NYDA, not any single actor in society. Because if we want to create more than 3.2 million sustainable jobs opportunities for the young people in need, uh, we need a more multi-pronged approach and a multi-sectoral effort. And uh, we believe that uh, with the NYDA acting as that golden thread, being able to ensure coordination, ensure the mainstreaming of youth development into society, and facilitating youth development with all sectors of society, we will, at some stage, be able to reach that final destination. All right, okay, great opening thoughts. Uh, we're gonna get the thoughts of uh, young people um, out there and uh, also in this room and how they're responding to your initial comments. And let's get this conversation going. We're gonna take another quick break and after that, we're really now gonna start uh, thrashing things out and uh, hearing your thoughts as well. At Morning Live SABC is our Twitter handle, so please join us after this.